Hello YouTube. Welcome back campaigners. This week we're going to be picking up from where we left off last week. Last week we made these indestructible walls and we're going to be using the same materials again. That's the PE foam and the EVA foam. So we're going to be using the same things again. And this time we're just going to step it up a little bit, make a little bit more complex builds with it just to demonstrate what you can do with it. So we've got a little bit more complex wall sections. I've got some waystones or portals or Ritual, whatever. Uh, you, you can make whatever you want with them. Uh, I've also got a couple of styles of pillars. So stick around for that, and we're going to jump right into it after this bump. During the bump, there's going to be some uh, links down below. As uh, So you want to like, share, subscribe, or help out the channel. And I'll see you in just a second. Thanks for coming. Here I've gathered the usual suspects. Now these are the same foams that we used last week. This is the EVA foam, not the PE. If you remember, I said it would melt. So I've gathered a bunch of the EVA foam, and then I've gotten ready to take some aluminum and iron, and iron, and then I'm gonna do some ironing. And then there's some ironing to be done. And then I had to iron some stuff. Yeah, this goes on for about 25 minutes. So I'm gonna save you all the problem of putting up with that and I'm just gonna jump straight into the build as you can see a bunch of different ones a bunch of different sizes and we're gonna turn those into several different types of standing stone today just so I can demonstrate the different patterns on it so uh, let me show you a couple of those I've got these dwarven pillars I'm gonna try to work on and uh, these start with a solid pillar in the middle and then build up on the outside so this is made with an additive version these start with a center pillar and then half parts added on, but some of them, some of the parts added on are frames, so those are reductive. And some of the, but then there's some pieces at the top that are additive as well. I want to show you the whole book here. I'm also going to work on some that are done with the slice and hit with the heat gun texture and I'll show you that in just a minute that's actually what I'm gonna do with this other wall piece then I've got some standing stones I'm gonna make in two different methods one is gonna have a piece laid on it to raise it up and another piece is gonna have a piece laid on it but that piece is gonna have parts cut out and then both of those are gonna have a frame around them so that's what we're working on today so I'm gonna jump right into that and start with the wall that uses the heat treatment to make this really simple I'm using last week's example with the trapezoid on it to make my shape you can map it out using your measuring mat you can use a rule you can use whatever you want to lay that out but I'm just gonna make this simple and make a couple of quick marks here you get the idea let me do the rest I'll be right back okay I've got this laid out and so I'm gonna go ahead and trim it I'm not trimming any of these borders or anything in these lines, so I just want to trim this shape, this shape, and this shape. So let's follow that real quick. And you don't have to cut particularly deep in this. A millimeter to two millimeters is all you're really going to need. And remember, if you go outside the line, you're going to have a bad time. Need a pretty sharp knife for this. This one's doing a good job can't really tell because it hasn't heated yet but all right I'm gonna finish going around these and I'll be right back all right save this last cut so you can see about what depth I'm going to here you always want to start from a corner you don't want to cut all the way into a corner so what I'm doing is starting there plunging in and pulling along that with a nice steady hand as much as possible then turn it around the other way, plunge in at the corner, and pull that last little bit. And that's all of those done. I have no idea where my knife cap went. I'm always dangerous with the knives. Let me set that over there out of the way. Okay, you can't necessarily see it, but there are gaps in there. 
but you will be able to see them in just a moment. We're going to pull out a trusty heat gun. I'm going to put it on a high heat this time rather than a low heat just to get it done faster. And you will see two things, three things. One, this rubber will go shiny as it seals the pores in it. Two, the gaps will open up like we're expecting. That's what we're actually doing this for. And three, some of the texture is going to come out of this. Now, there's not very much on this side in the first place, but some of that's going to come out. So, here we go. Watch the tip of the gun, it's still hot. And as you can see, that has created a very distinct gap. It heated up all my hot glue too. <laughs> A distinct, they created a very distinct gap everywhere I've cut. Looks like I miscut there, so uh, you can come back and fix that if you want. You can take the knife and sort of trim that out, or you can just leave it. I'm going to leave it. This is supposed to look like rough hewn stone anyway. So that is how you can make a very similar shape to this with a cut in rather than gluing a layer on. This piece that I'm using for the center of my pillar is not quite an inch it's about seven eighths so what I'm gonna do is take this and lay this down on my grid mat and look at about where seven eighths is and use a larger knife than I was using for the last part but I did find the cap for my knife so I feel a lot more safe now take this one again just like last week low shallow cuts as many as you need to get through with a nice sharp blade. That's the pillar cut. So now that we've got a nice square-ish pillar, square enough, we're going to take the two millimeter foam and cut pieces to fit four and then four smaller ones and then four smaller ones so we can go all the way around this. So I'm going to show you one of those and then I'll go back and do the others. So I think I've got enough to go all the way around with this piece. So I'm going to take that. I'm going to make these about an inch and a half tall. So I'm going to lay out an inch and a half. Use it again using the dots on my cutting mat. You can cut it however you want, but I'm making this one an inch and a half. You can make yours whatever size you want. And that's that. Now I'm going to cut this into fourths the easy way. I'm going to fold in half and slice through it. That's two. Then I'm going to take each of those, fold them in half. It's getting a little small close to my finger, so I'm going to leave a crease this time. And use that to guide my blade. And then you're gonna, I'm gonna do that one more time, but once I get those done, all I'm gonna do is take these and cut a 45 degree off on these. Again, using my mat, but you can do this however you want. Okay, and then I'm gonna copy that three more times. So I'll be right back with those once they're glued on, and I'll show you how to do the next set. Okay, here we go. Got three of those on there. Got the fourth one left. Show you how to do it. Same as last time. You want to try to get the glue all the way to the edges. So I'm going to put my finger here where I'm basically not going to be in the way of any of the corners. You can use whatever glue you want. I'm just using hot glue because it's faster and this is just for demo. Um, it works really well on this. So this is my go-to on this anyway, but you can use other types. Now, here's the tricky bit. I don't mean tricky like difficult, I mean tricky like creative. Instead of trying to pick that up and do anything with it, I take the pillar and line that up to my glue, press that into place. Now you're probably going to get some squeeze out and that's easy, just wipe that up before it gets too messy. You end up with these little, little strings, no worries there, they'll just peel off after they're cold or you can take a heat gun to them and just quickly hit it and all the sh strings shrink up and disappear. So. That is one layer of the angular dwarven pillar type pillar. 
I'm gonna go ahead and finish this and I'll have a demo of this at the end. You can see how this is gonna work. I'm gonna put some more here and then I'm gonna put some smaller and smaller levels here. So I'm gonna should come back in just a second and there'll be a quick flash of me just showing you that I've got the, the next two layers on this done. And then I'll save the finished one for the end. Almost done with that. I'm gonna show you. I've done them in different colors so that you can see me as you're here on video. All I've done is take those and trim them each down to there. And I made them a little longer so that I can have little tabs that hang off to glue them on with. So flip that over, make sure that the texture side you want up is facing down and hit that with your glue of choice. I'm going again going with the hot glue. Make sure you get to all the corners. Then take that and lay it in place where you want, slide it to where you want it, and give it time to dry, congeal, harden, whatever your particular glue does. Once that has done, then you can use scissors or knife to trim off the little tabs to, to fit. And you can also trim any little blemishes here if you don't like them, like, you know, if one of these is a little bit too long or the wrong angle. You can trim those off, with again, with scissors or a knife. So these little scissors aren't working for me, so let's go with the bigger pair. There you go. One traditional style dwarven pillar. I don't use this style, so... That is okay. You'll see this. I'm going to finish it up with another segment up here so you can see how these blend up and how most of this will be hidden and how all of this line will be hidden. But you'll see that at the end. So that's it for the dwarven pillar like this. Uh, come back in just a second. I'm going to do the second kind of dwarven pillar with the inlays and the rises. Okay. As you can see, got two different types of geometric dwarven style pillars here. One is the traditional style of the layered diamond shapes. As you can see, I've put two layers in the middle and top, and three layers at the base. Gives it, makes it a little bit wider at the bottom. It's pretty stable. I'd probably still put this on a base or weight it, but that's generally it. And this is all done with adding layers on. This one, I've added this purple layer. I've added a thicker black layer around the bottom. Then I've added a yellow layer here. But at the top, I've got the thicker black layer here and then a yellow layer with a recess cut into it. So you can leave recesses, you can emboss it, you can deboss it, however you want. But as you can see, you can make them fairly intricate and ornate. And uh, so I'm gonna use some, some examples like this and I'm gonna make some standing stones and I'll be back and show you when those are finished. There's no point in going through the whole thing. It works the same way. We're cutting little strips of foam in repetitive patterns to make them to where they can either lay with a frame with an impressed piece or as a slab that sticks up from the other. So I'm going to make some stones. Be right back. So as you can see, with just a little bit of carving and heat or some knives and scissors, you can get some very interesting, intricate shapes and make up lots of amazing designs that'll look fantastic on your table. So these are the shapes all finished with the uh, design work. I'm gonna go ahead and paint these. You don't need to see that again. And um, there's, I already po pointed out before my uh, techniques on painting, but again, I'll put them up here in the top to let you know. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and paint these and then there'll be some beauty shots of these before and after in comparison with the original drawings I did for them so you can see how close I got to it. So you can really fulfill your vision of what you're trying to make with some very simple, very inexpensive materials. So here's the beauty shots. There you go campaigners it's just that easy make out a quick design of what you want hit it with a knife and a heat gun or multiple layers of the foam however you want to do it build up your design slap a coat of paint on it 
good to go. This stuff is so inexpensive, so available, and so simple to work with that you can knock out an entire pile of walls, pillars, uh, portal stones, waystones, markers, whatever, in an afternoon. So I hope you jump into it. I hope I've inspired you to build it. And if you have, please let me know. I'd love to see the pictures of your work. Okay, that's it. We're ready to wrap up. Before you go, please like, share, subscribe. And there's going to be some other ways in the links down below to help out the channel. Please, it would be really nice if you did. I would really like that. So, but until next week, I wish you luck in your campaign. I love you. See you next time.